Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Alatra TV Ireland. We continue talking about creative society. Creative society is a global project of Alatra International Public Movement, where volunteers from all over the world are conducting surveys and interviewing people about the society they want to live in. Society where everyone is happy, does what he loves most of all, and contributes to the well-being of the whole community. My name is Lina, and my co-host today is Valerie. Valerie, could you please tell us a little bit more about the theory we are testing during our broadcast? Hello, everybody. Yes, during our conversations on Alatra TV, we are using the rule of six handshakes. And this is the theory that all people on Earth are connected with each other. And at the end of today's conversation, we are going to ask our guest who she would like to meet and have a chat about creative society in some of our next broadcasts. And to reach this person, we will ask our today's viewers to share this video with the use of two hashtags, hashtag creative society and hashtag Alatra Unites. Thank you, Valerie. I'm very happy to introduce our guest, Gronia Brady, teacher, lecturer, therapist, author of two books. She is dedicated to creating loving families and good relationship between parents and children. Thank you, Gronia, for joining us today. We really appreciate that you took your time to do this with us. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and some insights to what you are doing? So first and foremost, I live in Ireland and I live uh, in the Midlands in Ireland. Uh, probably you could say west of Ireland really. But Midlands for most people, we don't have that many guests or people visiting. So it's kind of a, a rural area, but it has steeped in tradition and history. Um, I'm a mum. I have two grown up daughters. Uh, I was a single mum. And I was mother and father, so I had to learn skills for uh, dealing with my children. And I suppose that's how uh, I've arrived where I am today. Um, I'm, uh, I teach, um, no, the lots of my life are children, plants, and human growth and development. So they're the things I've dedicated to and I'm really and truly committed to. Uh, I, te I'm a te I teach, uh, as you've already said, I teach uh, English as a second language. I teach uh, horticulture, and I teach um, personal development, uh, mindfulness, and relaxation, among other subjects. But they will be my main subjects. I lecture for uh, a, a lecture for degree student degree students, and they're mainly uh, childcare workers, um, anybody working in childcare, uh, childcare development workers, um, and again, I would do uh, child psychology. Um, child health and well-being, uh, additional needs, all that, those kind of subjects. Uh, as a, as a, um, a therapist, I would work, I just work in the schools. I'm a play therapist. Uh, I just work in the schools because in Ireland, we have a lot of people working in the health system. We don't have very many people working in the school system because uh, it's not uh, recognized or it's not. But we have so many children going to the school system that need help. And I'm a great believer that if they get help early on in life, there's some chance of them leading a fulfilled, happy life. Um, and finally, an author. I became an author by default, really. Um, I was sitting, uh, looking at a family uh, one day out at dinner. And I, it was a, thing, a thought in the back of my head that I'd write a book someday when I was going to retire. So I was thinking of retiring. And family never spoke. They were all on their uh, iPhones and whatever. And their phones and they never spoke during dinner so I had thought okay I need to do something here because the communication skills are gone or they're um, so I set about um, writing uh, simple parenting skills in minutes and again it's a very simple book I have wanted it for busy moms and sin single moms like me who read and run and implement it later and go back and look again so it's a dip in and dip out of book and I wanted a page and a half for a technique and it's all about how rather than what, because there's, um, when I was looking for information for me, uh, I had to read through reams of books uh, to get information. And I decided this was a very simple way for uh, moms to just read and run, basically, and then come back later and implement it. 
Um, the next, uh, yeah, the, so it's really about techniques, creating positive light with your children, and it's about um, techniques. And then the last thing is about uh, every day as a teacher, I will be asked about difficulties parents have with, with children. So that's kind of the inspiration, and that's how I came about kind of writing that one. The next one was is a family project. It's a three-generational family project. And again, this is by default as well. Um, we were going to, my daughter and I were going to write um, uh, an online parenting program for our parents. But as we were doing the research for it, we came across the idea that really we needed to work with children as well, so that we would come from different angles and we would create um, solidness in children and kind of uh, resilience in children. And that's how we set about it. So then my mother got involved and so it's a family affair in that my daughter is the one daughter did all the artwork and all the creation of the activities and the other uh, did all the editing on it and my mom just took the little grip and told us all to move on. <laughs> so again very much a family um, a family affair and uh, it's a superpower life skills. It's a fun activity group for children between the ages of six and twelve. Because when, uh, with my own experience of my own children, when they got to be uh, about 12, 13, they kind of were more in, as all children, they're influenced by their peer group. And this is a crucial time for building relationships with your child. Uh, the book was designed to, um, to be done, per, per, um, how would you say, um, best of all with your parent or a buddy, but it could also be done for ch children could do it on their own as well if they didn't have that support or they didn't have, and so therefore they would learn the skills as well. And that was the idea behind that book. So I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's about the hype. Thank you. Thank you, Gronia. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's very interesting to listen. And uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, like, like me, I have three children, and you can face so many difficulties uh, during, uh, you know, communicating with them and it's kind of challenge. And I think it's really, really like, you know, um, important to know healthy and positive ways to, you know, to build relationships. And, you know, I, I know um, there is, a, um, we, we, when we dis were discussing uh, this interview, uh, all together, we wanted to know your opinion about this ability for people to feel. In your books, uh, you talk a lot about the importance of, uh, of this ability, you know? So could you please uh, tell us a little bit more and explain your vision of this? I'd love to. Um, both books have uh, an element around feelings. The parenting book is really looking at active listening. And active listening will be picking out the feelings that your child has and uh, identifying them as you, as you're dealing with your child or as you're chatting with your child or your ch child is telling your story and you're picking out the feelings. And the whole idea is that, that your child feels totally and utterly understood by you. My mammy understands me. My mammy or my daddy or my gran loves me. And that's the whole idea behind uh, really listening and picking out the feelings for your child. And I'm aware of this because uh, it's not, none of the anything in the book is not something I don't practice. Looking at any of these books, I've tried and tested. And with my daughter, when she was about 12 years old, I remember she was feeling maybe 11, maybe 10 to maybe somewhere there, right? And uh, when she was, um, she used to come into my room. My, my bed was the, the, the center of all the kind of activity. And maybe I suppose the love angle in my house. And they all got into the bed. And uh, one particular day, I remember she came and her sister was sitting in beside me. Now, she always wanted to be right in the middle between everybody. And when she saw nobody was that hit, that she wasn't getting in, she would turn around and she went back to her room and close the door. So I thought, oh gosh, right. And she had done this a number of times and I thought, I need to do something here. So I began to name her feelings. And uh, little by little, um, the door, she wasn't going back into her door anymore. She was kind of just pushing in for her space, right? But in the same time, you know, I'd been naming her feelings all the time. And then the day that she told me that I was manipulated, she was really manipulated by me, was the day I knew I had actually succeeded. So that's uh, in relation to super parenting skills. And in the uh, superpower life skills, uh, we would have dedicated quite a, a bit, to, again, for children to, ident to identify their feelings and uh, so charts for them to cut out and hang up. And also for um, 
name and like naming their activities around their feelings and doing games around them and kind of ways of dealing with them as well is kind of what we, we would have looked at. Mm-hmm. But our book also is about, it's, it's really about, that book, uh, Superpower Life Skills, is about resilience. And it's about uh, learning the skills, like for example, a simple thing is if you're doing an activity that you keep going. If you fail, no, no matter. Do you know, like um, uh, what do you call it? Many famous people have failed and we have quotes from the famous people that have failed in the book and how they have gotten up and dusted themselves off and taken, you know, it's not yet, I'm not there yet is kind of the idea. And it's again about growth mindset as opposed to fixed mindset. And kind of very simple things that children need to know, like maybe the different types of intelligence, you know. I don't know about in other countries, but in Ireland in the past, we might have compared one child with the other maybe more often, much more often than it should have happened. Mm. But at least this way children can, you know, know that, okay, Johnny's very good at school and whatever, but I'm very good fixing the, the toaster and I'm very good uh, playing the instrument, you see. And again, it's a bit about children knowing these things and also knowing about being grateful and the joy that that brings to them. So again, there's an awful lot of uh, skills, life skills that I, at my age, uh, know that now 10-year-olds um, know as well. And I think that's the real value of it. They've picked up the the skills that I have at my age through years and years of self-development and they're in fun kind of activities um, for them to enjoy and to enjoy by themselves or with their body or their parent or the grandparent. And that's kind of where uh, feelings kind of, is just feelings is one angle that there are a whole pile of other things in it as well. And, and again, it's all about uh, resilience and happiness and creating happiness. Yeah, great. Thank you, Grania, for those wonderful insights. <laughs> Very truly <laughs> interesting listening to you. Um, so what impact do you think education has for the whole society? And how important do you think it is to invest to it? And also when you go about education, do you mean it as academic knowledge or something that helps one open up to kindness and love and a way to self-evolve and you know, to improve yourself or personal development? I mean, there's a lot in that, so there is, okay. So I start off with the, the, the first one was that you asked me about, I suppose, the impact of education. And uh, uh, well, let's look at the impact. Like, for example, in Ireland, um, you're, we're looking at in Ireland, we've had um, a history of no education. Uh, we would have had, uh, we were a colonized country. And we came from um, hedge schools. We had to have our schools in the hedges, otherwise um, living in life wasn't just, um, how would you call it? We weren't allowed basically have schools at a certain time in history. And in the 1960s, that all changed with uh, new, the minister, the then minister for education, and we got free, we have free education. And I suppose then it was a bit about kind of getting us up to speed and getting us uh, into, um, you know, the three hours, reading, writing, and maths, these were things kind of, and then gradually we've been in, incorporating other things. But again, it's now we're at a time where we're beginning to look at what are the outcomes? What do we actually want from educating our children? What is needed in this society? And I think that we're only beginning to look at this. I don't think we've really, really examined this. Um, like, for example, um, when I was doing, I did study economics, and uh, this is just an example of how we look at education. Um, we, uh, my first year, uh, it was economic growth. And in my second year, I became very interested in uh, economic welfare and the welfare of people in our state and whatever. But my exam questions came up and um, I barely scraped a pass <laughs> by the skin of my teeth, must I tell you. So nobody wanted to hear about my welfare. It was really about economics. And that taught me a very big lesson about uh, what, you know, education uh, the, the, what's valued. We value education by what we, marks we give it and all that sort of thing, right? So we really need to look and see what do we want for our children. And if we're looking at happy, self-fulfilled, joyous children that are really living life to the best and being the best they can be, we need to reassess uh, what we're valuing and what we're we value it by examining it and by giving it kind of a, a, a place in university or whatever. But we have changed from, uh, we used to be a very teacher-led um, education system 
And uh, I know that in the, the preschools and that, it would be child-led. And I think this is a really important thing for individual children, that education is child-led, that the teacher just isn't the fountain of all knowledge, that the teacher is the facilitator of learning because uh, she's the observer, she's the listener, and she's the initiator to new uh, studies and new um, interests for children. And that she's the supporter and the explorer with the children. And I think this may be some, uh, we're moving in this direction. And this is kind of really um, where the child is, it's um, self-directed learning. Every child is learning what the child, what the child needs to learn. He doesn't have to be all learning the same thing at the same time, and they don't have to be drawn all the same picture at the same time. As far as I'm concerned, that does not create, is not uh, uh, conducive to uh, creativity. We need to be set, setting our education system, particularly in Ireland, our primary and our secondary education, where children are really and truly following whatever it is that their interest is in. And of course, being led to look at other subjects as well. But each and every one of us, comes with a special interest and a special contribution and a special place in the world. And we need to be looking at how we can capitalize on that. Now, I know this is possible because I work in, uh, and I'm, I'm not a believer in any one system of education any more than another, but there are self-directed learning uh, approaches um, in Ireland and in other countries as well. And I think we really need to be looking at that. We want to be creating the love of learning and we really need to be creating uh, lifelong learning. And we also need everybody to be contributing because there is nobody that hasn't got a contribution to our society. And so therefore, if we are valuing the differences and facilitating the differences in our education system, and we're facilitating the love of learning, it's worth the winner. We can't lose. Now, I'm probably lost in all of what you asked me, Valerie. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I've left out anything that you... Um, uh, Yes, I think we might have most of what's there. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Have I missed anything, Valerie? I'm not sure. Oh, you did ask about you did ask about being kind and supportive. Well, that was that. Uh, yes, in that question somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's something uh, um, about young children, for example. Uh, young children are at a. We have not a lot of research in relation to young children. And we have not had a research in the last 30 years around child development. And I don't think we're really using it. Like, for example, now we know that uh, very young children are in a hypnotic state, that they're between the ages of whatever, when they're conceived maybe, or in, when they're born, up until the ages of, of six or seven or thereabouts. Um, it's now kind of uh, recognized that they're in a hypnotic state and that they're absorbing the world around us. And we really need to be looking at, um, talking to them, uh, um, you know, kindly, because they're absorbing everything around us. We are creating their self-image. We are, um, we are, uh, from, from where I'm looking at it, I, I'm afraid of my life. If I have my grandchildren, the next step for me will be grandchildren. And I'll be watching everything I say very carefully and everything I do because of the message that I will be sending out to that child. They copy everything we do. And uh, in what they absorb, then they live their life through that. And I think that we as parents really need to know that this is actually what's happening and we need an awareness that, for example, if I'm treating Johnny as the man of the family or the, the what you call it, the family, and that the girl is the weak of the family or whatever it be, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can be anything. But again, we need to know that that's actually what we're passing on. And I suppose, um, yeah, being very careful and being supportive and loving and I mean, in my book, I have a hundred hugs a day, and I think it should be a thousand hugs a day. Okay, and they don't have to be hugs; they can be pats and kind of smiles and all the other things that we do that really uh, reaffirm. It's like reaffirming parenting, reaffirming parents, and reaffirming children. You're doing really well. You're great, you know. Uh, and again, that's all key to um, in education at all levels. And do you think that the principles you have described to us? Do you think they are only relevant to Ireland or could they be used as common practice in the rest of the world? I think it's worldwide, absolutely worldwide. We're looking at global. When I look at people, I look at global. I don't, I have kind of, I know we have racism and I know that I sometimes can be racist, but gradually I'm beginning to see the light and I'm gradually beginning to see that we are actually one and that we, um, that we need to be looking at, um, you know, uh, that 
it's all over, it's worldwide. And we need to be looking at what outcomes we want for children and do we want them to be the best that they possibly can. And there's so much of our brain and so much of our ability not used. Uh, and I think we need to be looking at how we can access this. Rona, uh, how do you think, um, is it important uh, for us as humanity to make high quality education based on these uh, principles of love, harmony, uh, to be accessible in the whole world? Yes, absolutely. And I think we are looking at, like for example, you look at COVID-19 right now. Uh, and really and truly, this has been a global thing. This is not, we are not individual. We are very focused on being individual. I'm Irish, I'm focused on being Irish and somebody else is focused on whatever. But in reality, a pandemic like this really brings us all and we realize that actually we're all one. And again, education is the same. We really, it's, it's the outcome that we are looking for that we need to be uh, looking at. And that we are looking for the best possible people in our society that we can possibly, and that's a global thing. That's not just an Irish thing. That's not just an English thing uh, or a Russian or any other nationality. It's global. We really need to be looking at and coming together to talk about the best systems and how we can create the best people and the best, like, for example, creativity, uh, building creativity, love and joy in families, love and joy in, uh, in our daily lives. I mean, a very simple thing, whether you're green, purple, pink, or black, or white, makes a whole difference. And we need to be looking at it like that and seeing it like that. And, you know, like Ireland has had such a big um, influx. Like I remember not, many, not that many years ago, we had very few. There were four <laughs> in the area I live in. There were four foreigners. One of them was my husband. And, uh, um, yeah, so we have really moved from, from that to a multicultural society. We aren't the same, we are not the same, we have moved on. We need to be accepting that. And again, we need to be seeing it, that they all have rights as human beings. And uh, being, every, like things being accessible is hugely important. True. Thank you. Thank you, Grania. Could you describe a society where you, your friends, your family, everyone is happy, where everything is just wonderful and peaceful. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a big ask, Valerie. You know? Kind of, yeah, your perfect society, yes. you know? My perfect society, no problem at all. I would be looking at a global society that we, um, that we uh, talk, that we think, and we act as one. Now, I don't mean that we have to lose our, our individuality within that. Uh, I'm really thinking that we are really looking for the best we can as a people, as a society. Um, for my family, I would like them to be, uh, like we have a tradition in Ireland, or it was a, trad was a traditional thing, I suppose, really, that we uh, all work together, that in communities they supported each other. So somebody had some work to do today, and everybody came to help. So they're very much about community and helping each other. And I think that's really something I would like to see happening again, right? And that we go back to, we go back to that. Um, I suppose for me, uh, uh, that we're really tuned into our human development, that we're really tuned into the research that's out there around human development. Instead of spending humongous budgets on our deaf things like war and killing each other and no need for us, absolutely no need for us. We need to be looking at uh, being fully self-expressed, fully self-aware, and that we are creating win-win situations all the whole time. This is what we need to be spending our money on, that everybody's win-win. There's no such thing as poverty and there's no such thing as uh, homelessness and there's, there's none of that. And that every child and every adult is reaching their full potential and that our money is invested in, uh, in humanity and in uh, creating a much better society where we all live in, in happiness and in harmony. And I think... Uh, from where I'm looking, oh, there's one more thing. Uh, seeing as I know that I come from a competitive family once upon a time, and it's about competitiveness, and I really want to not leave that out. I think we need to start looking at the whole idea that you're competing against yourself from the day before, how much you have improved from the day before, not how much you're, how much Johnny is better than you, or how much Mary and how many points Mary got in the leave. I think that's antique, antique, an antique, right? We need to be saying, how good was I yesterday? And am I any better today? And could I guess what will help me to be better tomorrow? And that's the kind of society we want to live in. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
We don't want to be living in it. Oh, I bet that the Jenny and Jenny that nonsense. Everyone has a unique potential, has a skill, has a contribution. And the sooner we start to look at it like that, the sooner we're all going to live in harmony and we're going to be spending our money wisely instead of squandering it on dead things. Um, <laughs> now, I'm sure lots of people will disagree with my, <laughs> my what to call it. <laughs> and that's okay. I have no problem with that at all. <laughs> I'll be delighted with, and I think the whole key is families and children. And we need to be working there and we need to be investing in that. Thank you so much. It sounds so good. And I personally, and I'm sure that uh, viewers of our program, they also want to live in this society because, uh, you know, the key is win-win situation. Yes. You know, it's so, um, your words are very touching and heartwarming. And I hope that we as humanity will be man will, will manage, you know, to uh, create this. We have yes. all, everything, everything for for, for yes. creating this um, healthy, I would say, situation in the whole world. I noticed that we have moved, uh, even in the last couple of years, we've actually moved, we do more mindfulness. I would work with parents in schools and they do more mindfulness because the children are doing mindfulness in schools. And I know that the childcare workers I work with, they're doing more mindfulness and more meditation with the children as well. So there's a big shift here from academic learning to actual mental health and mental health awareness. And I think that's a society, well, it's, it's beginning, it's not there yet. But again, I think that's huge. I'm a great believer in mental health and human development. And then I think that academic, academics and academia will fall into place automatically. Thank you. Gronia, um, we have a tradition during our broadcast. So we ask our guests to recommend uh, someone you want to meet next time. Uh, someone you would like to ask uh, these kind of questions about uh, society, about uh, his vision of uh, hu humanity, hu humanity, you know? So maybe you can tell us whom would you like to uh, Do they have to be Irish? Right, yeah. It can be any person, any person in the world, any ideas, and we just uh, want to test the theory of the six handshakes, you know? Okay. Okay. Uh, could, I su could I suggest um, Selena jo Joinson? She's Welsh and okay. um, she works uh, with horses in horse sense. Um, and um, she would have a very different, she would have a similar, but yet uh, an enlightening perspective as well. Wow. So I really enjoy her. So Hopefully, okay. soon we can reach okay. her and we can <laughs> ask her about her and vision of Creative Society. Okay. Great. Um, dear viewers, please share this video with the use of the hashtags Creative Society and Alatra Unite. You can see them right now on the screen. So we will see how soon we can meet who Gronya has chosen. Okay. Thank you. I'm delighted to be able to choose. <laughs> and also, I would like to tell our viewers um, that uh, if you are interested to join this project, so you can just visit the website, website Alatra Unite and press the button join and uh, next time maybe uh, you also will be in stream video asking uh, people about their envision of creative society and uh, i want to remind that uh, in uh, alatra international public movement uh, uh, the, the, there are only volunteers who are doing all this stuff in free from work time and they can say like Personally, you know, my impression, I'm very happy that thanks to this platform, uh, I, uh, we have um, ability just, you know, to make friends and uh, know people from different countries and different societies. And in essence, you can see, yes, cultures are different, but we as humanity as are, you know, the one. Uh, and it's, you can just feel it. So, um, very heartwarming. And it's great to test the theory of six handshakes. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Grania, is there anything else you'd like to wish to our viewers? I would like that they, um, yes, indeed, 
Um, I need to say that they, <laughs> I'm sure I can't say that they, my book is Superpower Life Skills and um, my uh, Single Parenting Skills uh, in Minutes. And again, it would be um, uh, their children. The children are the key to the future. And the more that they can spend the time with their children, I know that we get caught up, and, and me too, I got caught up in kind of making money and buying things for them. But in actual fact, the bottom line of what they actually need is you and your company, your time, your interest, uh, being with you, hanging out with you, learning from you, uh, sharing authentically your life with them would be key. Uh, enjoying them, uh, really, um, you know, getting value of the time you have with them. I think that's just where it's really at. Okay. And they thank grow you, and they're gone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your time. It was Real pleasure to get to know you and to talk about all these beautiful ideas. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye.